Our society has countless images, ideas, and stereotypes about change agents. People who help an organization transform by improving business process and interpersonal interactions. Whether influencing fashion, business, art, entertainment, science, politics, or law, these change agents have and continue to positively impact today's society on so many levels. And today, we are proud to share the story of these business owners, coaches, innovators, and thought leaders from various industries who are eager to educate, inspire, and motivate you. This is Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Our Voices, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Room 8, co-host of Woken Free, and the lifestyle editor of Plus Model Magazine. And this show is focused on highlighting the amazing work of powerful change agents who have a great message to share with the world. And today I'm speaking with Kelly Stickle, the founder and CEO of Ramadista, the to discuss the importance of women networks, leadership, and so much more. But who is Kelly? She is the founder and CEO of Ramadista, a social think tank examining global retail disruption. A collaborative thinker, she is focused on understanding the layers of disruption in retail and translating insights into actionable items for retail brands using community as a business model. Devoting a decade at Accenture and Equity Group, Kelly spent a majority of her career focused on connecting people, cultivating women leaders, and building business development strategies in management consulting. And starting in recruiting, Kelly worked her way through vendor relations, business development, and alliance partnerships focused on marketing and commerce business problems in both B2B and B2C verticals. So without further ado, Kelly, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Absolutely. And you have such a really interesting background. I guess my first question out of the gate really is just kind of how did you become the woman you are today? How did you find your way to business and fashion and and everything that you're doing? That is a good question. I think I was one of those kids out of college who didn't know who I wanted to become. And instead of being able to go right after it, I sort of had to deduce what I liked and didn't like about roles I had. Um, And that really led me uh, into recruiting. I think recruiting can be a good place for people who don't know exactly where they want to go, but are convincing or, you know, are connectors. Mm -hmm. And so started my career in that and uh, was quickly recruited to a management consulting firm. And I was able to see the different roles within the business and really liked uh, vendor relations and alliance partnerships. So that kind of led me down that path. Mm -hmm. And then as I was in management consulting, I I started seeing that women needed more visibility in the business and started building conferences with with the idea of of bringing women to the table. And uh, my uh, focus sort of shifted to also really include um, empowering women on the journey. And so I combined both research and management consulting with the idea of cultivating women leaders. And that's how we got to my think tank. Mm. And can you explain for everyone listening uh, what exactly uh, is that you do in your think tank and uh, what does that involve, right, for anyone who do- who's not aware of that? Sure. Um, we look at the things that haven't happened yet. So we've seen a lot of disruption, whether it be you as a customer on your phone and mm-hmm. how you behave and how you purchase. Now that you've got that device in your hand, whereas five, seven years ago, you were still going to your uh, laptop or your home computer to buy things when you were going online. Mm-hmm. So that's changed the experience for the customer everywhere they are. And at the same time, because of those same shifts, the insides of businesses are changing. Mm-hmm. Um, we happen to focus on retail um, at the beginning of this uh, research because um, that vertical has the biggest propensity to test mm-hmm. and has uh, some free budget in order to pay for it. And so it was that. And then a lot of young women volunteered to work on the conferences I were building, and they were much more interested in fashion and beauty versus you know manufacturing or life sciences. Mm, Interesting. And what has been, I guess, some of the most surprising information that you've discovered through this think tank when it comes to retail and consumer behavior? 
Um, that we're going to see a lot of disruption, but that I'm surprised how many women are the pioneers and the thinkers of solving the future. Uh, mm. I was surprised to see how we aren't programmed to take credit for our work. So mm. um, did about 40 research projects and noticed that men know what to do with mm-hmm. work they've accomplished and tasks they've done as they go to a stage and tell others about it. Mm-hmm. And and that helps in the line of promotion. And I noticed that women aren't, um, I think it's probably biology. We're just not triggered to do so. So I launched the Women to Watch program mm-hmm. as a way to tie our thought leadership to um, to the innovation and get more women on stage and, and hopefully get more promotion. Absolutely. And what do you think are things like daily uh, either behaviors or uh, daily regiments that women should actively be thinking about so that we do feel more comfortable to claim kind of our success and to, to share what we're doing with the world? Well, when I think women understand that what the outcome is, is more visibility and more promotion, Mm -hmm. it becomes interesting when it looks like it's just for show, Mm -hmm. which is what it mostly looks like on the outside, Mm -hmm. is that there's no interest there. So I would say what we're trying to do with the program is show the, the, the straight line that visibility and building your own brand gives you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of women like to take their credit and put in a little box next to them. And just as long as they know they did it, it's enough. Mm. But when you do an exercise that says open that box and look in there and just so you know it's empty is somebody else will take your credit if you don't. Mm. So I think that also empowers women to say, well, like, I'm not really looking to give it away. I mm-hmm. was just keeping it in a box. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And when it comes to uh, the, your experience with essentially growing uh, networks and specifically women networks, do you find that women network enough? And if not, what would be contributing factors to that? Um, I think that everybody can always connect and mm-hmm. grow their network, uh, whether you're a man or a woman. So I would say that anybody who isn't thinking about all the different ways to connect, they're mm-hmm. missing opportunity. Okay. Um, I think you know that as a natural connector, mm-hmm. that you are going to get much further by helping others and finding uh, more people that are like-minded to help think through challenges. And since we focus on the future, it really is imperative that we collect everybody who's attracted to what we're doing because mm-hmm. we're solving things that are new and different. Absolutely. Okay. You are listening to Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse. My guest today is Kelly Stickle, the founder and CEO of Ramadista. So, Kelly, when it came to your career, right, and as you continue to grow and and excel and and accomplish so much as you already have, uh, what would you say have been the greatest challenges you faced and uh, some of the biggest successes? Challenges would be in building this business, that mm-hmm. it is harder than it appears, and that, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you really have to have the wherewithal to, to get it over the finish line um, alone. And that doesn't mean you can't have a group around you, mm-hmm. but it's been really interesting. You really have to hold that passion for everyone, especially when you're delivering new ideas and new models. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing that was harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, and then it, it takes longer than I thought as well. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is more because I built community and I used community as a business model to build my business and that you have to invest in that first mm-hmm. before it's monetizable. Mm. Um, success. I mean, I've seen success in various career levels. I was at a successful leadership position in management consulting, making six figures. To me, that was one level of success. But Mm -hmm. then I felt like my passion was calling me to do more. Mm -hmm. And so I do think it's successful to have uh, left the corporate world and, you know, be year five out of that, you know, still trying to find a way or still finding ways to grow the business. Mm -hmm. That's been really exciting. Wonderful. Okay. 
And what were some of the resources that you use and help support you uh, as you made that decision to say, you know, I want to work for myself and want to uh, build, you know, this empire, this uh, company for myself? Well, I started uh, with the idea of, um, you know, what could I really sell and build and grow and and how can I use my current network and my Mm -hmm. current connections to uh, cross over into a new area. And that, that, that's one of the things that um, I did was use my current resources Mm -hmm. um, and then figure out what skills I needed to develop. Um, in order to move into a new space. And that was methodology and using research skills and things like that. So um, I took a lot of the network I had and what I knew and and used that to help me move into a new industry space Mm -hmm. and then um, relied on connecting and building a a new network from there. Mm, Okay. And when it comes to uh, kind of uh, how business is being affected by our political climate or certain movements like the Me Too movement or Time's Up, have you seen any correlation between um, what's been going on with kind of the forefront of feminism and activism in our communities and uh, consumer behavior or how businesses are even taking note of it and maybe deciding to incorporate that in, in their model at all? Well, I can see that, um, you know, my business focuses on educating brands, cultivating women leaders and connecting globally. Mm -hmm. And I can see that there are other businesses who want to align with that, those sorts of purposeful statements Mm -hmm. about the business and Mm -hmm. that we're looking for more outcomes than just making money. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, having businesses that are focused on cultivating women leaders, it's timely right Mm -hmm. now. And um, it certainly adds to the conversation. I think that now is a good time in in the day that we're living in that we're opening up these conversations and that they're being uh, welcomed. Mm -hmm. And you look at a lot of the writing around Me Too, it was really looking that these that we have women in writing positions Mm -hmm. that could really gather a story and and make sure that they've covered all the facts and done all the homework. So when they're bringing stories to light, Mm -hmm. it's not a one-off. It's a conglomerate of women with the same like-minded stories that are really pushing through um, for us to, to, to be believed, you know, and to get people behind these stories. So that's been exciting to see that, it was really the women writers writing these stories that have helped open that light up. Mm, okay, interesting. And would you say having a, a, a better connection with media or press is a part of cultivating women leaders and women leadership? I think there is an element of learning how to interact with the media, whether we're so much more on video and radio and podcasts. So there is some need for developing that skill set just like any other one Mm -hmm. you know i'd rather have my first talk on stage be you know in front of 30 than thirty thousand. and so i think um you know that's one byproduct of getting women to the next level is getting them comfortable in front of media okay okay and uh just i would love to know as you you know when you formed your career to to be focusing on women leadership and and cultivating women leaders what does that practically mean like would it mean like are there certain tips that you can offer to say you know if you're looking to take your career to the next level or be a better leader in business and community what are like three things that women should be thinking about or should be executing Well, three core things is we're not always inspired. So if you're waiting to be inspired before you move in your career, that's not going to happen. It's really using your will to move past through challenging things. Um, I think another one is that uh, fear is always present. Many people think uh, successful people don't have fear, but they're really using courage to move through fear Mm -hmm. and that it really never goes away. Mm -hmm. And then I think the, the third one was especially if you're building something that's disruptive or new, that you're not always going to be liked. And Mm -hmm. so you really have to weigh, you know, is that 
a characteristic that you can handle when you're building a business or you're trying to build something new and different. Can you handle that friction? Hmm. You are listening to Our Voices. My name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest is Kelly Stickle, the founder and CEO of Ramadista. Next, on the voice of...